have you been thinking and asking um, yourself what is going to happen according to the end times prophecy? You see, the Bible has a lot to say about the end times and uh, nearly every book of the Bible contains prophecy regarding the end of times. Now, taking all of these prophecies and organizing them can be very difficult. But uh, following what I'm going to present to you right now is uh, just a brief summary of what the Bible declares will happen in the end times. So, the first thing which will happen is um, uh, Jesus will remove all born-again believers from the earth. This is uh, in an event called the rapture. Okay, this is the first thing which is going to happen. And uh, this one, we, we read it from uh, the book of First Thessalonians 4.13. And uh, we can read all to 18. It says, But I will not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. These are people who have died. That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So this is your hope. For if we believe that Christ died and rose again, and uh, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him? This is a promise. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we, okay, those who are alive, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we be ever, uh, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. These are comforting words about how we will be raptured. You see, people say there is no rapture, but uh, this one is a clear picture of the rapture. We will be caught up, okay? And also, this one can be confirmed again in 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 15-51. Uh, 15 verse 51. Let me show you how the Bible confirms the rapture. The Bible says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Okay? For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. That is, will be given new bodies. Okay? So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. You see, there's a promise of the rapture. We will be raptured. That's the first thing which will happen according to the... Um, the calendar of the end times now after being raptured what is going to happen now they these people who have been raptured all these christians will be will go to a judgment okay there's a judgment and this judgment is called the judgment seat of christ okay now at the judgment seat of christ the believers will be rewarded for their good works and faithful service during their time on earth or they will also lose rewards, but they will not uh, lose eternal life for lack of service and for disobedience. So this one is confirmed very well in the books of uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 11. 1 Corinthians 3, verses 11. The Bible says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, uh, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so 
as by fire. So you see, you will not lose your salvation. What you will lose, it's your rewards if you do not work diligently for God. So in this time, when we have the judgment seat of Christ, after the raptures happen, it will be all about rewards. And let me confirm one more with one more verse here. 2 Corinthians uh, 5.10 2 Corinthians 5.10 It's also confirming the same. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Do you see? That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So we will all appear, all Christians who have been raptured will appear before the judgment seat of Christ and you'll get your reward according to what you've done in your body when you were still alive after you got saved. So if you preached, if you did good, if you avoided temptations, if you did uh, whatever you did, God is going to uh, reward you for that. You can go and check my other video about the five crowns that we'll get in heaven and you'll be able to understand more. Now, after that, after that, the Antichrist, okay, the Antichrist, who is called also the beast, will come into power and will sign a covenant with Israel. This is just an example, okay? Uh, it, it, he will sign an, an agreement with Israel for seven years. Now, this seven years period is known as the tribulation. We can read this in Daniel. Daniel uh, 9 verses 27 and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week now a week according to god is seven years a, 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 a day for a year okay and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. I know this one is confusing, but let me bring it in easier words. So now what will happen is this. For seven years, uh, uh, an agreement will be signed. Now this seven year period of time is known as the tribulation. During the tribulation, there will be terrible wars. Okay, there will be terrible wars. So many things will be happening. Uh, wars, famines, plagues, natural disasters, and uh, God will be pouring out his wrath against evil and sin and wickedness. So the tribulation will include also the appearance of the four horsemen of the apocalypse and uh, and, and so forth. Okay, you, you, you see here there will be uh, uh, seals, there will be trumpet judgment, balls, and also the horsemen of the apocalypse. Now, about halfway... Through the seven years, okay, at the middle here, through the seven years, the Antichrist will break the peace covenant which he made with Israel. And he will make war against Israel. Okay? And this is what we call the abomination of desolation. I'm sure you have heard the abomination of desolation. So he will declare himself that he is God and enter into the temple the temple of God in Israel, and declare himself that he is God. Okay? And also, apart from that, he will set up an image of himself and say that that image is the one that has to be put into the temple and be worshipped instead of God. Okay? So, it, exactly what is going to happen? Now, we can see this about this image where we have read here. In the midst of the week, at the middle of the seven years, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Okay? And for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate. Even the consummation that the, that, and that, that is determined shall be poured upon the desolate. You see? And also, let me show you also in Second uh, Thessalonians uh, 2 verses 3. What the Bible says concerning the same thing. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, this one has double meaning. It also means 
uh, something to, uh, concerning before the rapture and also it means the day that the abomination of desolation will be set up and the antichrist will be completely and fully revealed that now this is the antichrist who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God and that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. You see, he will be sitting at the temple and declare himself that he is God. That's exactly what uh, the Bible says. This is the temple which have been will have been rebuilt, because in Israel there is going to be the building of the third temple. It will be built during the time of at uh, the tribulation okay now the second half of the tribulation is known as the great tribulation this is the second time okay there will be a lot of problem now this is also called the time of jacob's trouble let me first show you what the bible says revelation 7 uh, 14 revelation 7 14 it says and i said unto him sir thou knowest and he said to me these are they which came out of great tribulation so the the saints the people who will not accept the mark of the beast because the the the, the antichrist will bring in a mark and say it has to be put in every person those who will not take the mark of the beast they will be they love their heads cut off and they will go to heaven now the bible says these are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb you see it will be a time of great tribulation it will be so fearful and the bible says this is the time of jacob's trouble who is jacob jacob is israel so it is not a time appointed for the church because the church have already left in the rapture. This is a time that God will be dealing with the Israelites so that he can make them believe in him once again. It's a time of Jacob's trouble. Let's see. Let's confirm those words. Jeremiah uh, 30 uh, verses 7. It's saying, Alas, for that day is great so that no one is like it even it is even the time of jacob's trouble but he shall be saved out of it you see god will be focusing on uh, 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 saving israel but the other people they'll have to lay their heads to be cut off okay so that's really important to understand that now at the end Okay, at the end of the seven year tribulation, the Antichrist will launch a final attack on Jerusalem. The Antichrist, he will be coming to uh, ready to destroy Israel in a place called uh, Armageddon. This is a very flat land in Israel, very, very flat land. It's like a, a place for war. Okay, this is where exactly that battle will be. Okay, so he will, uh, uh, the Antichrist will launch his final attack on Jerusalem, culminating in the battle of Armageddon. Then Jesus will return and destroy the Antichrist and his armies and cast them into the lake of fire. So Jesus will come and he will come from the clouds and destroy all of them. Okay, and cast everyone who was involved into this into the lake of fire okay everybody who was involved in this the armies the kings and all those people will be cast into the lake of fire okay and afterwards and also um let me let me let me first show you this verse before i continue revelation uh, 19 verses 11 it's good to understand so that you can see and i saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. This is Jesus coming. And in, in his righteousness, he does judge and make war. This is during the, that time of the Armageddon. His eyes were as flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. This is the blood that he shed at the cross. And his name was called the Word of God. 
And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon the white horses and clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Now, these armies are us, the Christians. We will be coming back with him, okay, with great glory. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with, with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of a mighty God, okay? And he has his vesture on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying uh, to all the falls that f uh, fly in the midst of the heaven, Come, gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. You see, armies will be killed. So many people will, you know, lose their lives and and that God will call the falls of the air to eat, <laughs> to eat all these people, that they may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of sis and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. All those people will be fighting against God. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and the armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. You see, Satan will try to retaliate. The Antichrist will try to retaliate, but it will not be possible. Now, and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. So the Antichrist and the false prophet will be taken with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. So the Antichrist and the false prophet will be the first one in the lake of fire. You see, lake of fire and hell, it's different, okay? Because uh, the other people, see what the Bible says, and the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the earth, Horse, which which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh so these other people apart from the uh, the false prophet and the antichrist any other person who, who was in that war will be cast into hell okay into hell because they will die and they'll go to hell and they'll stay there until the day of judgment is when they'll be brought out but already for the antichrist and the false prophet they will go straight straight ahead to where to the lake of fire you see lake of fire and the and the hell they are different and uh, of course you can go and watch more videos that i've done about the same topic so you have seen you have seen this one the battle of the great Armageddon. so they are fighting here trying to fight jesus but jesus will do as it has been written and uh, now after that of course like we have seen satan will be bound Okay, Satan will be bound for a thousand years and he will rule, Jesus will rule his earthly kingdom for a thousand years. Now, these a thousand years, Satan will be bound. Let's see where the Bible says that Satan will be bound for a thousand years. In the book of Revelation, Revelation 20 uh, from verse 1, it tells us about Satan be bound, being bound. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up, and set a, re, a, a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he shall be loosed a little season so now <clears throat> you see satan will be bound a thousand years into the bottomless pit like i've shown you here that's exactly what will happen now at the end of their thousand years satan will be released and defeated again and then cast into the lake of fire let's check that uh, this one, we can confirm it again in uh, here, Revelation um, uh, 20 verses 7, here, 20 verses 7. And when a thousand years expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, 
okay, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, and the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So he will try and deceive all these people once again. Just look at the devil, really a liar, cunning, deceiver. And uh, they went out, uh, and they went up on the breadth of the uh, of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints. And the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So they will try to go round Jerusalem, trying to defeat Jesus now, who is ru ruling in his earthly kingdom here on earth. And they will try to, you know, uh, uh, to, 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 to surround Israel and to try to defeat God, Jesus. But it will not be possible. Fire will come down from heaven and devour them. Then after that, the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. You remember where they were? And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So you see, now Satan will be cast into the lake of fire. Before, he was in the bottomless pit. Are you seeing the difference? So that's exactly what is going to happen. Now, Satan has been cast into the lake of fire, where the false prophet and the antichrist are then after that we have the judgment day judgment day now what does the bible say at the great white throne judgment this judgment is called the great white throne judgment where everybody you remember i told you that people who have uh, fought christ and who have done all these things then they will not go straight to the lake of fire they will go back to hell they will go to hell sorry now all those people will be risen up so that they can come to this great judgment and everyone who has died from the time of adam and they have never been believers they'll be risen up and they'll come to this judgment the great white throne judgment to be judged by god this is where the Bible says all the saints will judge the wicked. We will be there con confirming and testifying and saying, yes, uh, uh, somebody will be asked, D why did you not believe in God? You see, you see, you see, do you, do you not hear? No, you know, I don't. Uh, uh, and we'll be called, Keith, come here. Do you remember posting that YouTube video? That guy, he watched that video and he heard this story and he did not want to believe. And I'll say, yes. Yes, Lord, I remember on the, on the 1st of May, 2021, I posted this video and I told these people and they did not want to believe. And God will tell them, now, you know where sinners go? Poop! They'll be thrown to the lake of fire. So that's exactly what will be happening. Let me show you exactly the words from the mouth of God. The Bible says in, uh, from Revelation 20, 10, to 15 and the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day or night forever then afterwards they have been thrown the judgment starts and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was no uh, and there was found no place for them everything will flee from god even the heaven and the earth, it will be so, so terrible that day. And I saw the dead, small, great, stand before God. And the books were opened. Look at these books which are being opened. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. You see, these people now, they'll be judged according to their works, not according to if they believed Jesus, because all of those will be unbelievers. And that's why all these people, they were not found in the book of life. Who is life? Life is Jesus. So if you're in this book of life, then you have already your fate has already been done. You have already been raptured. And you're already ready. And also those, uh, the tribulation saints will also be written in the book of life because they have, been, uh, they have laid down their lives for the sake of Christ. And now this is the great white throne judgment whereby every person, those who died, they'll be uh, risen up. Small, great, Hitler, and all those other kind of people. It all depends in if they believed God or not. All those people, those who are never believers, from Adam, they will stand before God and books will be opened. 
these books will be documenting everything. You see, like right now, I'm preaching here, and there are some unbelievers who are saying, ah, Keith, whatever you're saying, ah, let me just enjoy my life first. Now, everything that you're doing right now is recorded in this book. Okay? So, the dead were judged. Anyone who is not saved is dead. That's why the Bible says we are alive in Christ. Even right now when we are living, we have not died, we are alive in Christ. And even when we die, we'll be alive in Christ, we'll not be dead. Because only the dead will be judged out of those things which were written in these books according to their works. Then, then the Bible continues, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Everybody! Even those who died in the Titanic, in the ocean, and everybody who died everywhere, they will be risen up back to life again so that they can be judged. Okay? Uh, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. You see, death, death is everyone who was not in Christ. They are called dead. We are alive in Christ. Any person who does not have Christ, death. And the hell, hell means everything which is in hell right now. There are false spirits who are there, all those uh, spirits of the Nephilim who are there in the time of Noah, all those demons and everything and all evil stuff who are in hell and bound there, they were all cast into the lake of fire. Now, this is what we call the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The book of life is the, Jesus is life. If you have not believed in Jesus, then you will be cast here into the lake of fire where there will be gnashing of teeth. And you will be there and asking yourself, why did I not believe? Why did I not believe when I still had time? Why did I hear and I just ignored? All those people will be cast here and they will be there with demons and will be there with uh, all those uh, evil beings. And uh, it, will, it will be a place that... Uh, do, do you see... I think God... Uh, uh, does these eruptions and uh, have you seen mountains uh, erupting and you see some lava coming out from the mountain? I think it's like God trying to show us an example of how hell will be. It will be a lake of fire. Just imagine and think about how terrible that day will be. It will be so terrible. Okay? Then after that, after that, something else will happen. Then Christ will usher in a new heaven and a new earth and the new Jerusalem, the eternal dwelling place of believers. There will be no more sin, no more sorrow, no more death. It will be a place of joy, okay? We are the new Jerusalem. When you hear the Bible say the new Jerusalem, we are the new Jerusalem. All of us, all of the believers who are believed in Christ, they will be the new Jerusalem, okay? So God will create a new earth and will create a new uh, heaven and a new earth just we go back to the initial way how we were supposed to be in the garden of eden we will go back to that time again and we will live and enjoy with christ and we'll be walking uh, in the you know between us and enjoy with us and it will be so beautiful let me confirm to you this uh, verse revelation 21 revelation 21 uh, verse 22 okay Revelation 21, 22. See what the Bible says concerning this. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Okay? This is that time. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor it. The gates of it shall not be shut all day, for there shall be no night there. You see how beautiful it will be? And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations on it. Okay? So this is really, really beautiful. This is a place that we will be, the new heaven and the new earth. After all this chaos and everything has been destroyed, we'll go back there. So that's the timeline. That's the timeline of the end times and what exactly is going to happen. Okay? So you may ask yourself, how can I be a member of this, of this new Jerusalem? How can I go here and I don't be cast into hell? There's only one simple thing. Right now, 
You just need to believe the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It is basically understanding and believing what Jesus did for you at the cross. You are supposed to be at this cross because you are the sinner. You sinned. The Bible says every man is a sinner. We sin with our thoughts. We sin with our deeds. We sin all the time and we are separated from God. And the only way you can be brought back again together with, uh, with God is by believing and understanding what Jesus did for you at the cross. Jesus while we, were, while we were still sinners, he died for us. He shed his life, his blood, precious blood for us. He laid his life for us so that whosoever will believe in him, he will not perish, but he will have everlasting life. Once you believe what Jesus did for you, how that you understand how Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again. He said written in the scriptures. And you believe that? Then, my friends, you're saved. All you need to do is just confess to God what you have understood and what you have believed. That's why the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. Now, confessing, you confess what you know. You cannot confess what you don't know. First, you have to know and understand. And then tell God in a prayer, Jesus, I now understand that you died for my sins. You shed your precious blood for me. You hung on that cross. And it was me who was supposed to be there. Lord, you did this for me. I accept that. I accept the atonement that you shed for me. I believe that you died, you were buried, and rose again. As it is written in the scriptures, all for me. And I accept you with all that I am. Please make me a new creature. Thank you for saving me. And thank you for making me a new being. Amen. And when you do that, brothers and sisters, you're already saved. And all this will not come upon you, okay? It will not come upon you. You'll be saved, sealed, and sanctified, and ready for the rapture. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you've been able to understand something. God bless you and have a blessed time. Please, you can uh, like this video. You can also um, share the video to other believers. Let them hear and understand, and even non-believers. And also, you can subscribe so that you can watch new videos. Uh, which I post every, every day. God bless you and have a blessed time.